The FDA could authorize the Pfizer booster shot for all adults as early as today. The CDC could still, would rather still need to sign off on the move before the extra doses could become available nationwide, though. That agency's advisory panel meets tomorrow. Some cities and states are already recommending all adults get booster shots, though. The FDA is also considering expanding authorization of Moderna's booster shots for everyone 18 and older. Meanwhile, the White House says more than 2.5 million kids ages 5 to 11 have already gotten their first shot. The CDC authorized a reduced dose immunization for that age group just two weeks ago. Dr. Hamish Adalja joins us now for more on this. He is an infectious disease expert and a senior scholar at Johns Hopkins University Bloomberg School of Public Health. Thank you so much for joining us. So the FDA and the CDC are meeting this week to potentially authorize the Pfizer booster shot for all adults. Once boosters, if boosters are opened up to the general population, do you think the definition of fully vaccinated should mean you've received a third dose. No, I don't think that that should be what what is defined as fully vaccinated. Uh, I think that becomes very confusing. It becomes very difficult to know. And I think there isn't still strong, compelling data that a healthy person who's fully vaccinated benefits more than marginally from a, a booster dose. And I think what we want to do with boosters is make sure that they're available to those people where there is clear evidence of benefit. People above 65, older, uh, the old, as we said, the older population, people with other medical problems. That's where we've seen data that this actually is something that keeps them out of the hospital. And I think we, we've had a lot of mix-ups with how to think about boosters because we don't really know what the goal is. Is the goal to keep people out of the hospital or is the goal to kind of push off breakthrough infections? And if that's the case, we don't know how durable these boosters are. So I don't think we should change the definition of the fully vaccinated. And I don't think you would call someone who's gotten two doses of Pfizer, put them in the same category as someone with zero doses. I think that's not fair and doesn't really, isn't supported by the science. Mm, that's a good point. Uh, meanwhile, health officials say people should get their booster shot either two months or six months after being fully vaccinated, depending on which vaccine they received. Uh, but let's say that someone uh, may not be able to get or perhaps doesn't even want their booster right away. How long is it? How long is too long to wait to get your booster? At what point are people going to lose that protection from the initial vaccine that they'll be at risk of hospitalization or even death? It's not one size fits all. So what I would say is if you're someone that's above 65, if you have high risk conditions and it's been six months since the dose of the Pfizer or Moderna or two months since J&J, &J, you should get a booster as soon as possible, especially as we see an increase in cases. For the general healthy population, again, this goes back to is there a, a strong benefit that they get because you're not really in that situation preventing hospitalization because hospitalizations are very rare in that, that age group. So there I think you can get the booster anytime you think it's necessary or you want to get it, but I don't think there's any duration of, of where it's going to be optimal to get it or not optimal because again there it's I think something which not which isn't an ironclad recommendation for those people like I said that are in those high risk populations they should get it as soon as they're eligible. You know, doctor, I think one of the challenges when it comes to understanding just where we are in this pandemic is we have a lot of numbers, but sometimes those numbers lack context or they have to be compared against other numbers to have a good understanding. And this is what I mean. Cases are on the rise. More than 87,000 new cases were reported yesterday and there were more than 1,400 new deaths. But do we know in terms of those numbers, what percentage of the deaths, say, were unvaccinated people? From looking at the data and tracking it over time, it's clear that the vast majority of those that are dying from COVID-19 are not vaccinated. These are vaccine preventable deaths. There is a small proportion of individuals who are fully vaccinated, particularly in that high risk group, people who are immunocompromised, people who are elderly that have died despite being vaccinated, but that's not the bulk of the cases. It's still being driven by the unvaccinated. And that's why I think it's a, it's a bad state of affairs when there are more booster doses going into people than first and second doses. So if the majority of deaths are of people who are unvaccinated, uh, how much is expanding the eligibility of booster shots really going to help? When it comes to deaths and hospitalizations, not very much. It's not booster vaccines that change the trajectory of the, the pandemic. It's not boosters that preserve hospital capacity. It's first and second doses, and I think we're losing. Uh, we haven't seen much of an uptick in first and second doses. Uh, and again, there's many people who want boosters. They're eager to get boosters, and I understand that. And and uh, but But that's not 
the way we solve this problem. It's it's getting people who have no immunity immunized against this disease. If that's what we're if we're trying to really tame this virus and remove its ability to threaten hospitals and put the pandemic behind us, we have to get more immunity in the population. And uh, just because there's people clamoring for boosters doesn't change the fact that we still have a major problem with first and second doses in high risk adults. So, you know, we want to keep people out of the hospital. A Pfizer is seeking emergency use authorization for an antiviral pill to treat COVID-19 symptoms. It is the second drug of this kind uh, to be to submit for approval uh, to the FDA. So this would be a drug that you could take at home if you started to have symptoms. How important is it for the FDA and the CDC to start to get these types of drugs authorized, especially when I think of, you know, the kind of stuff that people are willing to take in order to treat COVID that's not been authorized. I would think that getting this stuff approved and into the hands of pharmacists is really important and could be a game changer in terms of what hospitals can handle. It definitely will be a game changer because these are pills that not only decrease your symptoms, but they prevent hospitalization and death, which are the two most important metrics when it comes to this pandemic. So the quicker the FDA can move on both the Merck and the Pfizer applications, the better it is going to be for all of us, the better it's going to be for hospital capacity. And the Merck pill is already available in the United Kingdom. So I think we can move very quickly. The data looks robust and uh, everybody is eager to have these new tools in our, in our toolbox. All right, Dr. Amesh Adjala, as always, uh, Dr. Alja, great to have you. Appreciate it as always. Thank you.